Let's talk about the 2023 Ford Maverick. We're gonna be talking about price increases. Let's talk about need to know information, stuff that you might not quite pick up on and that maybe the dealership doesn't even want you to pick up on. So I wanna make sure you get the right model at the right price because I think often we get upsold. So let's avoid all that. Let's cover some basic equipment that comes in certain models and why I still would take the XLT I'll also answer the question, am I really going to still wait for our Maverick? Huh, because that's a whole different story. So we'll talk about the black appearance package, Copilot 360, why I would still pick an XLT, and some interesting news. I've got some interesting com comments to put down on the Consumer Reports review of the Maverick. Um, because some of it's really positive. It crushed the Santa Cruz, but it lost out to the Honda Ridgeline. And I want to cover why and how that doesn't bother me. And maybe at the end of the show, we'll put in a little bit of kind of interesting what's coming down the pipeline news. So stay tuned. You're going to want to watch all the way to the end because that's where all the good info is. So let's Put the pedal to the metal and start it right up. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. And if you like all the Ford news, automobile news in general, and the occasional review here and there, and some really poorly repaired vehicles, well, I'm your guy. Just hit that subscribe button, like, and share because it'll help the community grow. And actually, the whole goal of this channel is to get the biggest community possible so we have the most intel possible so if you really want added intel read the comment section people drop amazing information sometimes i make almost like almost entire shows just from people's comments like recently someone rate saturday morning ready to do their tremor order and kind of awful the dealer was just like no we're not taking your order uh, so that's really unfortunate uh, because it's not as if this thing is next to no allotments. It's going to be 8% of the overall production unless you also add appearance package, appearance tremor package to the tremor. Well, then it's only going to be 3% of overall builds. But let's talk about builds. First of all, Ford is going to be able to build EcoBoost. And this is kind of interesting because even, even though we know hybrids are a long wait, Marie and I are from July 30th, sorry, July 17th, got processed on the 30th of 2021. And we're probably going to be getting it in, well, now that they've pushed back the date, 2023 production is now November 14th. I mentioned that in my live last week, but we've got November 14th is when they're going to start building out these Mavericks, which means if we're really lucky, we get built, let's say, end of November. We are not going to get this in time for Canadian snowfall. And I've got a 22 Mustang GT. So what you going to do when you got a 22 Mustang GT? I really don't know. Drop it down in the comments. I'm fine. I've got the Bronco, but I want Marie to be safe. So she's going to be in the Bronco. What do I do trying to drive around a Mustang GT? So my lightning won't be in either because I'm not, I haven't been picked up for October production, which I don't understand. I'm one of the very first orders. Uh, the priority code apparently is fine and good and dandy. So we, as, we've done everything we can. Let's just talk about price increases. So we talked about how the 2023 Maverick, they're going to start building those on the 14th. If you have a carryover order, good news kind of a kind of a price protection but if your dealership did COVP you customer order verification process or procedure I like to call it the process you're going to be getting by mail a rebate that you can take to any dealer and it gives you $22,750 off on a hybrid $1,750 off on an EcoBoost but this is awesome the EcoBoost no longer costs more it's part of the it's a it's a no charge option, which I think is good because right now, despite all the news of a hybrid being really long, a lot of dealerships are noticing that about 90 to 95 percent of the orders are still hybrids. Um, so depending where you are, north, south, but region by region, hybrids are still anywhere from 70 to 95% of the orders coming in to a dealership. Now, my friends, that is a recipe for waiting a long time, but I still feel it's worth it. And the Consumer Reports 
uh, despite putting the ridge line ahead, really reminds me of why we're okay. Well, we're not why we're gonna tolerate and wait out our Maverick and not get something else like let's say a Ranger because I do love the new look of the Ranger and I'm not gonna go more into depth on this but I am gonna say y'all are gonna love the new Ranger coming out. We've got, <laughs> there are some surprises for you, some huge surprises and I think a lot of uh, people who have been waiting on a Bronco and want to go off-roading with the Bronco, I think I'm going to see all, not all of you, but see some of you switch over to, to the new Ranger because our market, there is a treat in store for us. But let's talk about this Maverick. Prices. Now, I want to make sure we all get the right price. So all models, if you're looking at an XL, the starting price is now 22195 the XLT, front wheel drive of course, 24,455. If you wanna add all wheel drive to any of, the, any of these, it's 2,220. Now the Lariat front wheel drive is 27,955, an extra 2,220 if you want it all wheel drive. So reasonable price for adding, very reasonable for adding all wheel drive. And very cool that the EcoBoost is no extra charge. So whether you get hybrid or EcoBoost, these are the prices you're paying. So XLT all-wheel drive starts at 24,455. Lariat all-wheel drive, 27,955. And it is normal that your dealership adds $1,495 as transport destination fee. Now, hopefully there won't be any other dealer fees and hopefully you won't be required to buy any added services like paint protection, nitrogen in the tires for $500. So work these things out while you're ordering up your Maverick. And don't worry, if you order up your Maverick and you get the color wrong, or you wanna move around packages in let's say a few weeks or a few months most likely, you will still be able to do that. What you won't be able to do is to go from a hybrid to an EcoBoost or an EcoBoost to a hybrid. So very important that you keep that in mind. Get your order in, even if it's not perfect, as long as right from the bat you pick EcoBoost or Hybrid because you will not be able to change those. But you will be able to make changes to your order. So really important that you know that. Now I wanna talk about a few things. Uh, this is my don't be fooled section of the evening. So first of all, don't be fooled. All Mavericks come with Copilot 360. Mind you, there's now three types of Copilot 360. You could say there's three levels of Copilot 360. So you've got the first level of Copilot 360. All Mavericks come with auto LED high beams. So automatic LED high beams. So very good performance. You'll see extremely well in the dark. I've tested it out in a snowstorm and at night in a snowstorm. Fantastic lights. Don't go buying a Lariat because you think you need it just for more safer lights. These base lights are incredible. Now you're also going to get pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking. That means two things. The vehicle knows you're heading towards an accident, but you know, doesn't want to be too much of a naggy parent at first. We'll just prep the brakes, really kind of priming them. Back in the day, this was equivalent of pumping your brakes. So that's step one. Step two, the emergency braking is if it's if it knows for sure that you're not paying attention, you're gonna hit that vehicle, it's gonna start braking on its own. So you've got with that pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, it's gonna warn you visually and audible that you're about to get to an accident. And you've got dynamic brake support, meaning the brakes prepare themselves so that they're as uh, effective as possible efficacious as possible, and then uh, they actually go into use. And you have the rear view camera. All of that is stock on the XL. You don't need to go ahead and spend more money now. Level two of, of Ford Copilot 360 is you pay for it. It's code 86B, it's optional. Even on the XL you can get this, so Ford believes everyone should access, have access to security, but here you gotta pay for that little kick up more. You, if you want the blind spot information system with cross traffic alert when you're backing up, 
Someone's coming, it beeps, it lets you know what's going on. You're gonna have to pay for that and it's also gonna come with lane keeping system. So if you start to get out of your lane, the steering wheel is gonna vibrate to wake you up and ever so slightly bring you back. This isn't anything sharp. I'd even say they could have had it come back a little more but I also don't like being pushed around by my vehicle. So you're gonna get lane keeping aid, lane keeping alert and driver alert system. So. In the case of a near accident, this is, vehicle's gonna talk to you. Okay, so there's a little pause in the video because you can give applause for a little pause here. A uh, little pause was whining, clearly um, wanted to be with Pa instead of Ma, so we switched Pops. Co-host Winston is with Marie. So sorry for this, right back to the video. Hopefully I didn't lose any of you on this. So your second, option is to pay for Copilot 360 and that is going to give you all the warnings. It's going to work to keep you in your lane but it won't center you in the lane. That's called lane centering at Ford. Now if you go up to the Lariat, this is where you can get Ford Copilot 360 Assist. So that's the highest trim. So this is level 3. This is where you're going to get adaptive cruise control with stop and go uh, and lane centering. So basically you follow traffic, even if traffic comes to a stop, the vehicle's gonna stop, come to a stop, and then the traffic continues, the vehicle takes off on its own. Now, don't mistake, here's a big don't be fooled, if the light is red and you're the first, if you're the second vehicle, great, you're gonna slow down with the vehicle in front of you. But if you're the first vehicle, well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna go right through the red light. So you still need to pay attention, people. Uh, I don't want anyone getting hurt on, on this one, so very important, don't be fooled. Certainly hope you've made it this far in the video. If you know someone who only watched the first minute, send it back to them saying, hey, don't forget to, to watch that part of the video. And lane centering. So this is where the vehicle does work to keep you in the middle of the lane. Sorry, I've got a dog slipping right off of me. You're also gonna have evasive steering assist. Evasive steering assist means the vehicle knows you're about to drive right into the back of someone. It knows if it, if it deems that the left lane is clear, it's gonna have you go into that left lane or if you're in the middle of traffic and it's a three or four lane, it's gonna avoid the vehicle that is in the way. Now you're also gonna have rear parking sensors. So that's when you back up it's gonna let you know, hey, you're about to back up into something. I wish those were you know, on F-150s for quite some time. We could get those just as a little inexpensive add-on. Um, so th this is just the way it is. And you also, of course, do need to have Ford Copilot 360 and Lariat lu Luxury Package to attain up to the Ford Copilot 360 assist package. Now I want to talk about a new package that I'm really liking. If you don't want to go with an FX4, which an FX4 is great because you're getting those gorgeous black mags, 17 inch, and you're getting a, on the XLT a 6.5 inch screen behind the steering wheel, just like a Lariat. So beyond the other things that are on the FX4 package, which are unchanged, so even if you go to a 2022 build and price and you hit details on the FX4 package or the 4K package, you're gonna see exactly what those packages do. But the FX4, I really find it unique for that extra screen, but you could also avoid both of these packages if they're not for you and just get a black appearance package. I think this black appearance package is pretty interesting because it comes with 18 inch um, unique mags that are aluminum and they're black you're gonna get black edition Ford logo front and back of the vehicle. You're gonna get black door handles, grill, mirrors, seats, all black. So you're getting the interior of the Maverick black. So that's a way to get an XLT uh, with a black interior or you could get a Tremor package. But then again, those are gonna be rare. You're gonna get interior accents that are black. So no orange interior accents. You're getting headlamps. Your headlamps are blacked out. like the insides of them. So they look really cool. If you wanna have a good idea of what this looks like, you can probably find an Edge ST line on a Ford lot or an Explorer ST line. They're gonna give you a really good idea. You've got also the tail lamps blacked out and do remember, don't be fooled, not available with FX4 package or the, or the Tremor packages. So keep that in mind. 
this is a nice package and it's something that I would probably get if it was my own Maverick. I would spice it up with the black appearance package um, because the hybrid, you can't get 4K and you can't get FX4. So that would be my way to get an XLT hybrid uh, with really cool interior, cool exterior, black appearance package, a hybrid. Now, now moving on to the consumer reports review on the Maverick. They gave the Maverick hybrid a 76 point score and the two liter turbo a 74 point score. Now less for the turbo, um, it costs more, but in the end, the overall review was quite good, very solid. The Hyundai Santa Cruz to compare that a lot of people, while well, they you know get tired of waiting for the Maverick, I'm getting a lot of comments saying I got a Hyundai Santa Cruz in the meantime, it gets 59 points by Consumer Reports. Now, here's some interesting intel that also came from the Consumer Reports. So thank you very much, Maverick Truck Club, for sharing this info, because otherwise I'd be locked out because I don't quite want to pay, um, but it is interesting. The Honda Ridgeline, which is another model that a lot of people are ditching the Maverick for because they get tired of the weight, 82 point score. It's kind of significantly more than the Maverick. But here's the thing, it's quite a bit more expensive. Its base price is 38,140 versus the 20,995 of the Maverick. And the fuel economy is also vastly different, it's a huge difference. You've got, it has 13 miles per gallon on the city, 29 on the highway, so overall 20. The overall fuel economy of the hybrid Maverick is 37. So that is a pretty big spread. And also surprisingly, the Maverick, this is still surprising some, city 33 miles per gallon, but 39 miles per gallon on the highway. They got that reversed. The Maverick is better in fuel economy. I'll get the exact real numbers on, but Consumer Reports, even they got this confused. Uh, I'm quite certain the Maverick is better in the city than it is on. The now for the Maverick, the fuel economy overall is 37 miles per gallon. And I want to clarify because a lot of people still throws them off and it looks like Consumer Reports, it also threw them off. They say in the city it gets 33 miles per gallon and 39 miles per gallon on the highway. Everyone expects a vehicle to get better fuel economy on the highway. And if I'm not mistaken, it's actually contrary. The vehicle is gets better fuel economy in the city. At least that was, that's a, that, those are the results that Marie-Pierre and I got. So I'll put official results just at the bottom of the screen. Now here's the thing, where the Ridgeline really beat out the Maverick cons for Consumer Reports is power, acceleration, and this is why it's great that the Ford Maverick now at no charge has the EcoBoost engine because now when they do the comparison, they're gonna have to look at, as opposed to saying the Ridgeline you know, accelerates 7.3 seconds uh, compared to the Maverick at 8.3 seconds, that's for the hybrid. When they're gonna be forced to compare it to the two liter turbo, they're gonna see that, oh, well, Maverick's faster than the Ridgeline. It's a lot cheaper. It's still more fuel efficient. And in regards to power, they're also gonna notice that the power is much more similar because the two liter turbo, 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, really gives the Ridgeline a run for its money. Really where the Ridgeline, the only advantage it'll have left is it's box size. So now I'm gonna interrupt myself, well, tie wearing version of myself, to actually mention why I would buy an XLT again. So I really like the 17 inch painted wheels. So I think that's worth it. Part of the reason why it's worth it getting over an XL, it's really right priced versus the Lariat. Cause once you go into the Activix, Seating material, I'd really be more interested in getting, uh, of course, the luxury package. So for price and quality, I would get an XLT. Um, cubby storage in the bed, yeah, not a big deal, but useful. The extra tie downs, I do like the little gray grill bar, just to make it pop up. Pointed out that it's not the base model. Uh, it really, uh, most of it comes really down to the power tailgate lock. I like to be able to walk away from the vehicle and just lock not have to worry, did I lock my tailgate? Am I gonna get the things that are in there robbed? I do like 
of course in the rear you've got the armrest that comes down with the cup holders i do like the black uh the br sorry i do like the blue and gray interior some don't like those orange accents but there is the black appearance package which i would seriously consider uh with an, a hybrid xlt and of course i like the parameter alarm and the keyless entry keypad that's actually pretty awesome little keypad with numbers on them and you can lock a key inside come back put your code in and have access to the vehicle so those are the reasons why I would go with the XLT. I don't feel like it's that much extra money over an XL. And I am really glad though that the XL, this is what makes it harder than before for did listen, the XL comes with cruise control. So the XL is also a fantastic deal. These are all reasons to, well, wait out the Maverick longer as Marie and I will be doing. Now, Give it back to uh, Ty. So on that news, I did say I'd keep a little bit of news. Well, part of the big news is I'm gonna have exciting Ranger news coming up. A lot of you are gonna be floored, but I can't quite bring it out yet. Um, but you're really gonna love what's coming to it. And I think a lot of people um, might consider even trading in their Bronco, or if they've been waiting, uh, I'd say more like if they've been waiting a long time for their Bronco, they're gonna consider the, definitely consider the Ranger. Uh, this is gonna be a game changer and it's gonna surprise a lot of people. And I also wanna make sure that you don't all wait for an email this week and keep refreshing your emails. For builds, there are some vehicles that are definitely not getting built. Winston did run off with my sheet this evening. Interestingly enough, I came home, I took my coat off, put it on the ground, take my coat off. He runs off with the papers. And what's not getting built, uh, scheduled this week, sorry, builds, they're always getting done, but what's not getting scheduled is the Bronco, Econoline, so not too many worried people there, but the Mavericks. So I just wanted to mention that 23 model year Mavericks are not scheduling this week, and 23 model year Broncos are not scheduling this week. So no need to continuously refresh. I won't talk about all the models that are scheduling because it's all the others. So if you've ordered something else from Ford, great news. Hopefully we'll come to you this week. Come back on the channel and share it with the community. It's nice that we get a good mix of really good news and, and some bad news. A good honest mix of everything. So until next time, I do wish you all more cars and more power. And we'll see you this Friday on the live. So every Friday, Marie and I do a live together. We'll see you right then and there. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. It does help feed two poodles. Take care and have a great night. What you got there, Winston? You got today's news? You got today's news? I know I just got home, but this this is it's tonight's show. It's tonight. It's it's tonight's show. See, they're important notes on what's happening. <laughs> okay, we'll play a little first. <laughs>